David from Electric Teaching here. Going to try to show you how to solve rational equations. If it's a rational equation, it must mean we have a variable in the denominator. That's what it means to be rational equations or rational expressions. Variables in the denominator. I'll do this with common denominator tricks. I'll do this with a common denominator trick and then cross multiply. That's how most textbooks will teach it. And then I'll also try to do blow out fraction trick, or as I call it, BOF, blow out fractions. Uh, textbooks do teach this. It's uh, usually called removing fractions or something with LCD, at least common denominators. Let's see, if I was to do common denominator here to set up one single equation, then cross multiply with the other, uh, the other expression on the other side, I would need to get, in this case, these are conjugate pairs. They're going to make difference of squares there of x plus 3 and x minus 3, which means this is going to be x squared minus 9 as a common denominator. That's conjugate pairs, and that makes difference of squares. And I do notice over here I have that same denominator that I'm making. Over here, x minus 3 and x minus 3 is needed to make the common denominator. So, new denominator would be x plus 3 and x minus 3. I, I'm not going to multiply that out just yet. We'll see what happens with it. Numerators I will because I'm going to have to have a minus sign and collect like terms. So as I tell students, let's just work the numerator here. Work the entire numerator. you got 2 times a binomial. 2x plus 6, distribute carefully. Negative 4 times that binomial. Negative 4x plus 12. Let's simplify this a little bit more. I know the other side is still 8 and x squared minus 9. So let's simplify this a little more. Uh, we've got a negative 2x on top. And what is that, 18? And down below, we still have the x plus 3 and x minus 3. So we're just cleaning things up a little bit. Got x squared minus 9 now. Here's where we'll cross multiply and uh, cross multiply to solve, or to get out of fraction mode. And I, I, I don't know how to say this. Uh, technically, you've been blowing out fractions for years. Cross multiply removes fractions. Cross multiply works specifically because it's a shortcut of multiplying the common denominator of all fractions to each side. Um, so just keep that in mind that when you cross multiply, you really are doing a blowing out fractions trick. So let's see what happens here. If I cross multiply, or honestly, you could just set the numerators equal to each other. Whenever you have the same denominator, that's going to mean that the only way this is going to be equivalent is the numerators equal to each other. So immediately I could jump to there, but just to finish the thought of cross multiply, let's move it this way. Um, the first one would have been negative 2x, uh, excuse me, plus 18, plus 18 times uh, x squared minus 9, and this would be equal to, I need to move that over, let me move that over here real quick, take me a quick second, but I need to move, I need to um, uh, then set that equal to the other cross multiply, the other cross multiply, which is 8 times x plus 3 and x minus 3. Now, the very first thing I would do in solving this one is divide by the common terms here. Divide by these common terms. That this divided on the, by the x plus 3 and x minus 3 divided on this side, also divided on that side, totally removes those. So they're canceled after I do the next move of dividing by x squared minus 9, which is the same as x plus 3, x minus 3. Well, that only leaves negative 2x plus 18 equals 8. I can solve here pretty easily. I'm going to subtract, get negative 2x. Let's bring this up here. So I'm going to get negative 2x is equal to subtracting, negative 10, yep, if I subtract. And then x is equal to, it looks to be 5 if I subtract by negative 10. So I've got x equals 5 here for a solution. In other words, if I put a 5 in all these places, this should end up being equivalent answers or the equal situation. Well, let's try the blowing out fraction trick. I want to see what this looks like now. Um, I have it in memory here, so I'm just going to paste it in, move it down here. So let's do the BOF style. BOF style is multiplying across the board, across the board, all three of these terms by the least common denominator. 
Remember that this is x plus 3 and x minus 3. And if you ask for the uh, least common denominator, you ask what is the most of any factor that, it, what is the, mo the most times that any factor is occurring? Well, x plus 3 is occurring once here and once here. So I need an x plus 3. Okay, and x minus 3 is occurring once here and once there. The most it is, occur it is occurring is once. So I'm going to multiply this x plus 3 and x minus 3. I'm going to multiply it to each one of these situations. I'm going to, in a sense, distribute it. I'm going to distribute it. I'm going to literally put it here. Hang on. Whoops. Here. I'm going to put one there. I'll just set it right here. I'm going to paste another one in. I can use the paste trick here. So I'm going to paste another one in right there. And then I'm going to paste another one in right over here. Whoops, right over here. So this is the exact same thing as if I was to take this term, excuse me, this term, and distribute it. So if I was to take the least common denominator and distribute it to each side of the equation, and then also to each term on each side. So it would be put an x plus 3, x minus 3 in each one of these locations. When you first do this, it seems cumbersome and hard, but after a while, this should become an easy and even the faster way of doing it. What cancels here? x minus 3s. What's left? 2x plus 6. What cancels here? The x plus 3s. What's left? A minus 4 times x and a minus 4 times minus 3 or plus 12. What's left on the other side? 8. So in one move, I've taken an ugly, rational expression. And in one slick, what I call blowing out fractions trick or BOF trick, I've turned this into a pre-algebra problem. This is literally like an 8th grade pre-algebra problem now. Minus 2x plus 18 is equal to 8. Subtract, divide, and you will get to the same exact answer. I know this seems tricky at first, but I think it gets easier and easier as you go along. Let's try one more, one more here. Now, this time I'm going to do only the BOF style. I'm going to do only the BOF style. So I'm going to do x over x plus 1, x over x, excuse me, x over x minus 2, x over x minus 2, and then equal to 2. What's the common denominator for all three of these terms? There's a 1 down here. Don't forget, there's a 1 there. So the common denominator, the least common denominator, happens to be the two of them multiplied here. So I'm going to distribute across the entire thing x plus 1, x plus 1, and an x, excuse me, and a x minus 2. If I put that on the left-hand side, if I multiply this to the left-hand side, you're going to get 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 2. Over on the other side, can you visualize this guy sitting on top? x minus 2 is canceled, and what you're left with is x times x plus 1. Visualize this moved, copied and pasted, if you will. Over here, x plus 1's cancel. What's left is the x and the x minus 2. So you got x and x minus 2 x squared minus 2x plus x squared plus x is equal to 2x squared. Middle term is 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Doubled is minus 2x. Negative 2 doubled, negative 4. I foiled and multiplied a 2 very quickly here, but you know we are in advanced algebra, so I should be able to do that pretty fast. If I subtract 2x squared from both sides, look what happens. Bye-bye x squares. Minus 2x squared. You can collect them to prove it, but collect them, subtract, collect, and this one's collected, subtract, it's gone. Add 2x to both sides. Bye-bye. The only thing left here is x equals negative 4. That's a nice, easy way. A little complicated at first when you're first learning it. But once you get it down, that's a real easy way to get this answer rather than common denominator, cross multiply, then get to this situation a couple steps later and get then solve and get x equals negative 4. I'm David from Electric Teaching. I hope that this has helped.